Hello there, and welcome to part two of the product studio setup in which you can photograph most any product. Uh, so as you saw in the earlier video, we photographed four very different products using our setup. And now I want to show you if you weren't happy enough with the images that you got straight from the camera. Now let's see how much further we can take it once we've put our images into the computer. Now we're going to be using the program Photoshop. If you don't have a copy of this program, you can get it, I think, on a free seven day trial. And after that, if you want to keep the program, it's just like $10 a month, something like that. I don't have any affiliation with Photoshop, but I love it. And it's like the only program I use. So I would recommend uh, you use it. This is also a bit of a tutorial for using Photoshop uh, because it's just like, it's a good program. Okay, good. So let's just like pick up where we left off straight away. It's like, okay, good. We've got our photos and our camera. We're just going to take out the memory card. Um, some computers, laptops, you can put the memory card straight in. Otherwise, if you don't, you just got to get a little memory card reader, which goes into a little plug hole in your computer. Now we will load these onto our system. Give me one second while I'm figuring out exactly where these files are. Okay, good. Right, let's open these up into Photoshop. Boom. Hi, Foxy. You're looking foxy, dog. You're looking so... Okay. So we've got our four images now opened in Photoshop. And it's like, well, where can we go from here? Now, there was something I forgot to say in the last video, which I do want to clarify just for the record, okay? Now, when you're taking your photos, now, under the lighting, um, under the lighting circumstances that I had set up there, when you're using flashes, um, flashes have what's called a particular color temperature. As in, if you look outside at the sun, the sun is a certain color of light, wouldn't you say? Which is a different color of light, say if you were inside looking at uh, the, the yellowy light coming from a fireplace. Thus, different types of light have different colors to them. And your camera can't always tell the difference of what type of light is being shone on this particular situation. So, Sometimes it gets it right, sometimes it gets it wrong. But what I just wanted to mention was that uh, when you're shooting with flash, go into your camera settings and make sure that the white balance setting is set to flash. That will make sure that the, that the color of the light that the flash is putting on your object is the your camera reads as the correct color so that white looks white. You ever seen a photo that looks where the white looks blue or the white looks orange? It's not quite pure white. Well, you can fix it by having that setting correct. With us now, when we look at it in Photoshop, the background looks white, you know? Or not totally white. You might say parts of it, especially the, the distant background, would be a bit gray. Hmm. When was the last time you saw a gray background on a photograph on Amazon or eBay, etc.? Which is what we're going to go into right now. As in, how can you, how can you get that pure, beautiful white background? Well, I'm going to basically show you, oh, look, to be honest, there are so many different things you can do in Photoshop. All right. But I'm going to show you something basic that I do when um, I'm shooting products with a, with a similar sort of setup to this so that you can take your image and uh, get an even better quality final result. Now, to be honest, it's a little bit of nitpicky work because literally what we're going to do here is we're going to trace a line around the object and we're going to cut it out like cookie cut it out from its background. That's how 
I know it can look a bit seamless and like, wow, you know, how do they do that? But it's just like, you know, the, the smoke and mirrors that make images look good. A lot of the time, even though we've shot this on a white background already and it looks pretty good, if you want perfection, my friend, you've got to cut that thing out in Photoshop. And let's just quickly show you how to do that. Okay, good. So when I'm in the program, ignore most of this. If you never used Photoshop before, I do not want to overwhelm you with all these things. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're just going to go straight into this toolbar option up here. All right. Now we're just going to go into this, uh, this little lasso looking thing here. I don't want the lasso. Okay. I want to basically click and hold and I want this polygonal lasso tool. Okay, I want to select that tool. Now what you do by holding control if you're on a PC and pressing the plus button, we can zoom in on Foxy. And then if you press and hold the space bar, uh, you can then click with your mouse thereafter and sort of drag around the image. Now what we're going to do, I'm just going to show you basically how you cut out something. Okay, keep in mind, I have made a tutorial about this already with, you guessed it, that guy. Now, all you do is you basically click on the edge of your object and you will see that it draws a line. And basically you just click and click and click and click and click. And you will, you basically have to draw a line which cuts out all around each image. Now this can be very, if you, especially when you have a lot of images to go through, this can be extremely tedious, very boring. But not to worry if, if, if it, if it does get to that point and you're not willing to do it, uh, all on your own, I surely gave up a long time ago doing it all on my own. Um, you can basically get people on the internet to cut it out for you very cheaply. There are freelancer websites you can go to where basically, uh, it's called um, clipping, image clipping. If you search image clipping, basically like for as little as like, oh, like a couple of dollars, even like less than a dollar per image, someone will cut it out perfectly for you. All right. If you have a lot of images to go through and you do not have the hours in your day to do this, get someone else to do it. All right. So basically, let's just say you have this, this uh, cut out now. Now, Forgive me, Foxy, but you're too complicated. You are too complicated, my love. I do not have the time and the people on YouTube don't have time to watch me cut around your beautiful figure. So I'm going to go to another image here just to keep this short and sweet. We have the glasses. We have our beautiful glass. Let's go to the simplest shape here. We're going to cut out this little fella here, our little candle. Good. This is easier to confront. Now I'm just going to cut around this. I will probably speed up time in this video so you don't have to die slowly like I am. Okay, good. I basically um, selected the entire object here, as you can see, cut around the entire object. Now, um, Good. Now, now this being Photoshop, there are literally about five different ways to do everything. Literally. All right. There are so many tools. I've just chosen one of them for this little thing here. And as you can see, like, let, let's, let's just be extremely critical here. Like if I zoom in, like the lines here are not so smooth. I didn't do the best job. All right. There are other tools that can get an even smoother result, but I'm just trying to give you a quick example here. All right. But what I can do to make up for this is if I go to then this little button at the top here that says select and mask. Um, and then I go down to the slider here, which is smooth. It can basically smoothen out my mistakes. There you go. Okay. It's sort of improved it there. But we, but to keep this quite simple, this video, I've got, I've selected the object now. What I'm going to do is press a button combination here, which is basically going to cut this out and put it on a separate layer. I'm getting flashbacks from Professor Cheswick. Seriously, if you want to laugh, 
That guy is terrible. We want to cut this out from its background, okay? So I'm going to press uh, on a PC. Control J. Now, if we look down in the bottom corner here, you'll notice another little um, area has popped up. We now have two images here, okay? One is the bottom layer, which is our original image, and the top one is just the image of the cup, the candle holder, which we've now cut out, okay? Now, there's little eyes that you can see there as well. If we click on one of the eyes, it will make the eye disappear. So now, basically, now this little checker pattern indicates that the background is now transparent. It's not there. Um, yes. But uh, what we want to do now is replace that with um, a pure white background. So what we can do now is we go up to the menu, click Layer, click New. New, new Layer. Click OK. Now on our little uh, layers here, at the top we have a layer, but it's invisible. So we're going to put something in that layer. All right, so we go over to this little tool here. It looks like a paint bucket, okay? Um, down the bottom here, or even up the top here, make sure that that color we have selected, you can double click on it, is pure white. Okay, good. Now we just click anywhere on the screen. Now it's all white. And now the candle hole has disappeared because this layer that's all white is now on top of that. You gotta think of it like a sandwich, right? Okay, so you have bar and bar and bar but you can rearrange these layers by simply going to it, grabbing our top layer and dragging it underneath the layer which has the cutout on it. And now we have our cutout on top of the white. Ta-da. Cool, huh? Great. Now, uh, now we've got a pure white background, but now you look at that and it's kind of like, well, hmm. Something looks a bit strange about it. It doesn't look quite totally realistic now, does it? Right? Because now if I hide, if I hide these layers, go back to the original image, like that, you know, you can tell that's that's real, you know, like because you got that little the little softness of the shadow there. You see? Something like that. It looks like it's actually on something. Where you compare it to the pure whiteness, it looks like it's kind of floating in a in a whiteness. What can we do about this, huh? Well good. Well, first of all. First of all, because I am extremely OCD when it comes to things being straight, which I've learned over the years of photographing so many things and having it to be perfectly correct. This is sort of on an angle. So basically I'm going to correct the, the straightness of this. Also, cause I took those photos like freehand without a tripod, you know, there's, there's a margin of error there. Anyway, so, um, with this layer selected, if I go control T, it basically selects this layer in a way which when we hover our mouse near the edges, you get this little curvy arrow come up. And we can just kind of click and hold and then turn it and we can just ever so slightly straighten it up. And then hit enter. Good, that now looks straighter, huh? Good. Now, what can we do about this shadow situation here? Well, we wanna, all right. Now, in the Cheswick video, he showed you the easy way to make a shadow, okay? Now I'm going to take it a step further. I'm going to show you the more advanced way to create a shadow, which looks more three dimensional and more realistic. Hmm. So how do we do that? Well, what we're going to do, you, you bait, and this is this, this is customized to whatever object you're working with, whatever you've photographed. So basically you examine the bottom shape of your uh, object there. Yeah. Now you can see that this is, this is again why I chose a simple one for this example. Yeah. could be way more complicated than this, but you see like, okay, good. So naturally we have a, a cylindrical shape, which this object is. Okay, good. So if we look at that, well, okay, good. How would that be resting? What's, what's, what's the bottom surface of that look like? It looks like an oval. Yeah. So work with me here. Let's go over here. We have a shape tool. It looks like a square right now, but if we click and hold on it, it allows us to change the shape. We're going to change that to what's called the ellipse tool. Okay, good. Now with that selected, I'm then going to change the color, make this color black. Okay. Click. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click somewhere here and I'm basically going to click 
and drag, and it's going to allow me to create a shape roughly the same size as what you can see is the, uh, the surface of the object. So now let go of that. Good. Now we have a solid black ellipse circle thing that just looks hideous. Yeah. But you just wait and see. Now change, uh, uh, select the tool up here, which uh, is the arrow tool. Now we can click and I want to drag, drag the object, drag the object down to where it should be about the bottom here. As you can see, clearly it does not match the shape of the bottom, but that's okay. So let go. Now click, uh, select command T again. It's going to allow us to now grab a side of this and just kind of morph it in a little bit. Yeah. Morph it in. And then, uh, if I hold shift and click the bottom here, it's going to allow us to stretch this out. You got to kind of just like putty it around a little bit. Doesn't have to be completely perfect, but basically you want, you want that bottom, uh, what do you call it? The bottom outline of the cup to be matching with your circle. You're going to see why in a second. Enter once you've got it roughly, doesn't have to be perfect, but roughly is nice. Now, come over to this, uh, where all the layers of it are, is again. Now, your, your black ellipse is at the top now. Drag that underneath so it's hidden behind. You can just see it poking out behind there a little bit now, yeah? But still, it's like a piece of black circle. Like, what the heck, man? Okay, good. Now, let's go to the next step, huh? Now, when you first make this circle, it it's in a... Um, it's in a form in this program, Photoshop which uh, does not let us allow us to change it the way we want to next. So basically <laughs> trying to give us a surprise. Okay. So anyway, just with your layer, your, your, what's meant to be the shadow layer selected, uh, just right click on it and select this thing that's called rasterize. Don't worry about what that word means. It means nothing. It's not a word. Seriously. Where have you ever heard the word rasterize before? It does not exist. Forget about it they're wrong, but select this, which will basically convert that layer into something different. So then we can do this next step. See, you don't need to know it all to get a good result. <laughs> so I select that. Okay. It's changed the, 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 the way that the layer is now. Now with this layer still selected, I'm going to make some magic happen here. Go up to the menu here and it says, it says filter, filter, filter. Filter, 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 the filter. Pull it down. You got the filter, yeah? Select where it says blur, 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 blur. Filter, blur, filter, blur. I was getting annoying it. Good. Now go, there's, I mean, this is how advanced Photoshop is, man. Like, how many types of blurs do you want? All right. Um, today I'm going to choose this one, which is a popular one, which is, Oh, like, see, here's another word that just like, see, see, you understand why people don't even like, you know, like, like confront this stuff or drop out of school because there's just so many words. It's like, of course I know what a Gaussian blur is or a Gaussian blur, however you want to pronounce it. Of course I was born with that knowledge. I'm going to choose this one. Now what this is going to do, this is going to bring up a little box. Now we can choose how blurry we want to make this circle. Where it says radius. Uh, you can drag this little slider. And as you can see, the more you drag it, if you watch carefully, you will see the blurriness occur to the shadow here. Look at this. And you literally, you just, see you can adjust it. You can be like super, super sharp. Or, or is blurry and you just like, you can play with it, man, play with it. But seriously, it's just like, get that to a degree of blurriness until it just looks natural. Until it just looks realistic. Just a little bit real. I quite like that. I'm going to go with that. Click okay. Look at that, my friends. This is the, this is the, this is the smoke and shadows behind photos because look at that. 
there's now an optical illusion here where if I just hide the candle layer, it's just a fluffy circle. But you put that back on and it looks like your candle is now sitting with a beautiful little soft shadow on a perfect white surface. Now that's a very rough and tumble uh, sort of showing you how, how you how it's done. But that's how it's actually done. Keep in mind, that's not the only way you can do it. There are many other different ways. But that's a, that's a tried and true, simple way to make a realistic shadow and cut out your object uh, onto a pure white background. Isn't it marvelous? Now, I don't want to bore you in this video. Like, we could literally go through one by one all these other, including Foxy here, and um, show you how you can cut them out individually and, and just add that same shadow. And you will see the improvements on these, these images just from cutting them out like that, you know? But it's like, hey, once you've got it cut out and it's looking like bingo right here, you can put that on a website. That's like, that's like pretty, pretty good. There are a few other little uh, tune-ups, which I'll just quickly show you. Here, if I'm honest with this one, uh, it looks a little, uh, I'd like to adjust the sort of the brightness on the thing. So I'm going to select the, the, the layer which has the candle. And I'm going to go up into where it says image, adjustments, curves. Okay. Now curves, curves makes a lot of complex things very simple for you. As in you have a line here and you just click somewhere on the line and you just wiggle this line. And as you wiggle it higher or lower, you will see it adjusting the overall brightness, etc., of your image. So, and you can just kind of like, you know, if the image looks a bit sort of washed out, faded, looks a bit too dark, a bit too shadowy, you can adjust this curve and you can kind of get it to a point where, you know, you're happy with it. Uh, now, I don't want to get too complicated here, but basically like, once, once you're happy with something like that, like I wanted to make it a bit darker so that I can see uh, the details on it a bit more. And then you let go and it sort of keeps that curve in that direction. But then you can click somewhere else along the curve here and you can also adjust that again. And it's adjusting, uh, simply speaking, it's adjusting the different uh, levels of the brightness. Like it's adjusting up the top here, towards the top, it's adjusting the brighter areas of it. Towards the bottom, it's adjusting the darker areas. So you can adjust, say, see, only the shadowy parts, where you can increase the shadow. See, look at that. Or, um, but then if you want the brighter parts to only be affected, then you can just uh, adjust the the the, taller, the parts near the top here. I'm trying to keep this simple. Okay. So you can you can play around with that. And then I go, okay. And I was like, wow, you know, that stands out. That looks quite good. What do you think, huh? Anyway, to be honest, I love you, Foxy, but it's going to be after to be another video for you, my friend. But that's basically how you do it, okay? So between my last video and this video, you can do your own shots for Amazon, eBay, wherever you want to sell your things online. So uh, give it a bit of practice. Play around a bit. You can feel free to contact me if you have particular questions or need some help. I hope I made this simple for you. Uh, you can definitely do it. Anyone can do it. And uh, you're welcome. <laughs> all right. Until next time, I'm Luke Ayers. Thank you very much for watching and all the best.